Hello, everybody. I'm not very used to work speaking on stage, but the fact remains that India is a land of problems. Everywhere we go, people complain about problems. Everybody says the transportation is bad. Somebody says the transportation was filthy. There are so many auto rickshaws. There is no health care. Then somebody says the railways are real mess. The toilets in the ra railways are real bad. Around 1996, I decided to quit all my job with a multinational company and started a small company dedicating my life and decided to dedicate my life to the development of certain low-cost vehicles. At that, at that point in time, every engineer worth a penny would go into an automobile industry making cars that would zoom from 0 to 100 in 10 seconds flat. Or they would be marketing tires for a company that would be uh, selling motorcycles or uh, something of that sort to people who can afford to buy those things. Very little in the country is being done by people for people who need money or uh, people who do not have enough resources. So I am presenting some of the better things that I have done in my life as an individual without an external funding, without a thesis or without a research or without a professional help from anybody else. It simply goes to the fact that I had a good understanding of physics, chemistry, and mathematics, and started to create those things around my fundamental understanding. So the first thing that I did was a small work on a rickshaw. So it's estimated that there are about 2 million rickshaws. Most of them are so very bad that it is impossible for the person to work around with that. Me, you, and I, everybody can only deliver about 40 watts of power against the 400 watts of power required to be, pull, to be pulling a rickshaw. Yeah, coming back to the rickshaw. There are an estimated of 2 million rickshaws in, in the country. Each cost about 5,000 rupees. There's not enough engineering done ever in the past 50 or 60 or 75 years that the rickshaws are being pulled in the country to do anything worthwhile about them. A rickshaw requires about 400 watts of power on an average, too much mathematics for maybe some of you, whereas everybody or maybe most of us can deliver only 40 watts or 50 watts of power at a stretch. It's estimated that there are several rickshaws in the country, and most of them are pedal driven, driven by people who are at the bottom of the strata of the society. I decided in the year 1996 to pick up something and do worthwhile things for them. I wanted to create a vehicle that would be a vehicle, but still be a pedal driven, would be below rupees 50,000. It requires a hell lot of a power which most of us cannot deliver. And the stress caused by a rickshaw puller in doing a day's duty is extremely high that sometimes and uh, most of the times it is life threatening. This is what a rickshaw puller's life looks like. On one slide, he is pulling about 10 children. The parents are risking their children, and the rickshaw walla is risking the children on the street. And the other thing is about 500 kgs of coal being loaded near New Delhi railway station. And this is how a vehicle looks like, a typical Indian chassis, a some angle, some weldment, some chain which doesn't work, a brake which is non-existing. And this is what a chassis of my vehicle looks like. It is a motorized, pedal-operated chassis. You take it 5,000 kilometers, and it doesn't work, or it doesn't break. Some of the rickshaws that I have created are these two versions. One is for a load-carrying capacity, and the other thing is a pedal. Now, the thing I'm describing them here is that, that as an individual, I could and successfully create certain patentable designs and certain vehicles out of, out of thin air to be able to deploy them in the country, and I'm looking at the central government's initiative to make necessary amendments in the Motor Vehicle Act so that they are considered as a pliable vehicle. Right now, government doesn't consider them to be pliable vehicles. There are no norms to measure those. The work that I did for several years on energy efficiency led me to believe that I can create a vehicle which will run and which should run without battery, which would mean that my pedaling power and the solar power Minded, there's only about 200 watts of solar power on top of this rickshaw. Now, it doesn't have a battery. It still is able to move at about three kilometers per hour with driver and two passengers on a sunny road. Not many people in the world have been able to demonstrate that. Not many people have been able to create a low-cost vehicle because most of them, 
and most of us are tempted to go for areas which give us more funding and more money every time. This is a disability vehicle. I shouldn't be using the word disability, but this is a vehicle which is typically available in the country as a donation vehicle for people with, for people with special needs. Now, this is gifted because you, I, and everybody who has some money would like to gift something, and the easiest thing that comes to our mind is to gift a disability vehicle or disability tricycle. The poor person has polio legs, but we are, in fact, ruining his whole upper abdomen and torso by giving him a vehicle that is absolutely unscientific. Nobody taught me how to design this vehicle, but what I came out, this is another modified version of an Indian petrol-driven vehicle, which is fitted, retrofitted with two wheels, it is donated by people who have money or donated by companies under CSR. Now, this is highly risky vehicle. This is a two wheel supported on the side of two wheels. And I would like to share with you, this is the tricycle I decided to make. It's a free floating three wheel tricycle working on lithium ion batteries. It is basically not a disability vehicle, but anybody with the spectacles, anybody with the glare in the eyes, poor people, children, Dependable people or anybody who can drive a vehicle can drive it to the nearest market. Now, I, I, I would wish that through this exchange of my idea across the country and across the globe, I, I seriously seek people like me to join the development work for the poor and downtrodden. Like it's no fun making a car which is already existing somewhere and I make another car by changing the headlight of it. Let's create something which is more useful to the society. These are some other vehicles that I made, and uh, of the, for the past one year, I'm associated with a larger organization, but until the, about a year ago, I was self-employed. And all this money was I was generating is by creating designs and then selling them off. We all know railway toilets, something that the last thing comes to our mind when we visit a general second-class railway toilet. You peep through it and you see the mother earth rolling behind. This is the dustbin of the railways. This is the dirtiest place in the railways. And the Supreme Court last year or maybe four years ago had mandated the railways to put biodigesters everywhere in the railways. These are the biodigesters which are being put. These are not designed by me. This is courtesy Indian Railways under license from DRDO. So what has happened is that the general second class lavatory or the toilet has been blocked and a bio toilet with bacteria has been put below the lavatory pan. It's a pure technical thing, bacteria digest it and within 12 hours only clean water comes out, the rest all the muck is eaten by the bacteria. What the bacteria do not know and what the Indian railways do not know that this pan this pan is also the dustbin of the railways. All the pantry car people would dump their uh, uh, utensils. All the thieves would put their uh, looted purses into it. A liquor drinker would uh, put the empty liquor bottle into it. The result was earlier this would fall onto the ground. Now this will choke the bio toilet. So they had a bulky mechanism. The bio toilet costs about a lakh of rupees, for example, and the mechanism to open the valve would cost another rupees 60,000. Last year, one of the designs that I had created has been mandated by the railways to put on all bio toilets at the cost of maybe 2,000 rupees. And I did that design for free for the Indian railways. Thank you. These, these are the real bio toilet tanks. Stainless steel, 304 construction, non-corrosive, but see what has happened. Because it has been choked, it has to be opened, the whole thing is destroyed, and the cost to railway is about five lakh rupees to detain a coach to repair a bio toilet that has been filled with filth that everybody around in the railways dump into it. I'll take another example of an LED solar lantern. Everybody is talking about solar lanterns. Everybody wants to donate solar lanterns. A lantern is nothing but a solar panel maybe, and then a LED fitment, but sadly they use Chinese, or I'm sorry, they use imported cheap lead acid batteries. The life of a cheap lead acid battery is less than three months, and every three months that poor lead acid battery goes into the drain somewhere, filling the groundwater, burning everything, and should it explode, 
then there's a blast. So practically nobody wants to change the solar lantern and then they go to the market, get another solar lantern with this lamp as a free gift from the authorities and this thing is dumped somewhere in the kachra. I have a patent on uh, a battery-less solar lantern, which would mean that a lantern that does not use any battery. It has an electronic circuit. It is rechargeable umpteen number of times. And in my accelerated cycles, I have done about 10,000 times of charging, which would mean that it can easily live 10,000 days of somebody's life. It doesn't have to be repaired. It doesn't have to be replaced and costs marginally more. I have also another invention of a regular syringe. Now, these syringe we all know, it's used to take out blood samples. But the fact is that in non-metro areas, the same syringe is used to put tetanus injection, it is washed, and next time it is used to measure the hemoglobin level of somebody else. Hepatitis A, B, C, you name a disease and it can be spread by the irregular use of a syringe. I'm working on a patent that a syringe can be used only once. It will destroy itself after single use. These are some of the things that I have created in my life. And I expect that India is a good place to work for. It's a full of energetic people. There are umpteen number of problems that can be solved here. And there are no greener pastures extra only in India. That's what I came here to share. Thank you. Thank you.